diary. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Well, not quite yet, eh Teddy? Anyway, since we got knocked out of the League Cup by Crusaders, we have continued to do well here at Bambridge Town. We picked up comfortable wins in our first three league games off the back of that, before stringing together a few draws, thankfully going through the Irish Cup proper on penalties, thanks largely to Lewis Hunter. We then looked to be getting on track with a win away at Portadown, only to lose at Newington Youth in the last game pre-Christmas. A few other teams have caught up on games in hand since then, so we now find ourselves second on the table behind the team we're about to play in Lockdown. They beat us earlier this season, but a win here would level things at the top of the table and it is a home game for us. It could be a tight battle for the title and automatic promotion this season, so this game is huge. Time to bounce back strongly. Until next time. everyone and welcome to episode 14 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Bambridge Town. I hope you are doing well and coming up today it is a top of the table clash as we take on Loch Gal from Crystal Park. Also a little bit of club news as well as we are about to enter the January transfer window. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as we did mention in the diary intro, our form off the back of the last episode where we did get knocked out in the quarterfinals of the League Cup by Crusaders. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. In the top right corner has been just a little bit up and down initially. Quite good with those three wins off the back of that. Three draws, thankfully, getting through on penalties against Newry City. Largely thanks to Lewis Hunter, he came up with a penalty save and then scored one to make sure that we did go through to the Irish Cup proper. We might come back for that game in tomorrow's episode, taking on top tier opposition. Yet again, still hoping for our first win over a Premiership team and it will be away at Linfield. And then off the back of that, it did feel like we might have just turned a corner with a 2-0 win away at Portadown, only to lose 1-0 to Newington Youth. So a bit of mixed form since you were last here, but we are still in quite a strong position on the table going into this top of the table clash as we take on Lock Gal in this game. Very, very important as we are nearly two thirds of the way through the season. And that is because of the rules for promotion here in the championship in Northern Ireland. We haven't discussed this too much so far because it wasn't something I thought we would have to consider in our first season in the championship but as you can see there the team that does finish on top of the table get automatically promoted to the premiership the teams that finish in second and third they go into a promotion playoff against each other and from there they take on the team that finishes second bottom up in the premiership so that does mean two potential playoff games if you do not win the league to try and go up to the premiership so it's fair to say it is a much easier route to just win the title and hopefully if we can beat Lockgale in this upcoming game we should go above them not on points but because we do have quite a good goal differential in comparison to them and with a third of the season left before we do go into that championship relegation split it does look like it might be a two horse race for the title as long as both teams do keep up their current forms at any time that we do play Lockgale it is going to be quite important you might see a few more games against these guys in this upcoming week's worth of FMOE episodes. But a little bit of a squad update that we do need to bring you guys since you were last here as well. One of the players that we did have in on loan has left us in that player. If we can find him eventually when we do go down and look at our loans. That was Peter Maguire. We got him on loan from the Republic of Ireland. That did mean his loan was until the end of their season. And that was during December. So one of our first choice centre backs has now left the club. Unfortunately too. We have tried to offer him a permanent deal here. At Banbridge Town. Did not want to accept that deal that we did offer him. Just wanted a bit more than we could afford wage wise. So it does mean that for the rest of this season. Unless we can find someone 
coming up in the January transfer window that Audran Ferry steps into the first team alongside Dylan Snodden. But apart from that, we are at full strength for this game coming up, this top of the table clash. Also, a little bit of an update in terms of a job that potentially did open. I thought it might be one. Would have a decent chance of getting. And that was at this club, Bella Town. I do remember someone leaving a comment on the first episode and they said after they went to Banbridge Town, they went to Bella Town. We did apply for this job because they are a team who were in Conference League qualifying this past season. They didn't make it through, obviously, to the group stages, as you would expect. But in terms of the season preview, they are a team expected to be right in the hunt for those European qualifying places in that Welsh First Division. In terms of their reputation, it looked like just a slight step up from what we have here at Banbridge Town. So it did seem like potentially a sensible move. But unfortunately, we didn't even make the shortlist for this job. So that is definitely not happening. And a little bit concerning that we didn't even make the shortlist is in theory, that is a job that shouldn't be too far above the one that we do have here at Banbridge Town. At the moment, maybe it does show we do still need to get a few coaching badges before we do look to head on the move for our next job here in this FMOE save. So that does mean that we're going to be stuck here at Banbridge Town for a little while longer, potentially a lot while longer, if you consider that we didn't even make the shortlist for that job going at Bala Town. But that does mean we can focus on the remainder of this championship season and hopefully go up to the premiership either through automatic promotion or by finishing second and getting through a couple of playoff games. It would be pretty gutting if we did finish second in the league and didn't even make it through to that premiership championship playoff when you do consider the big points gap that we do have there at the moment over the team in third, which is Dirk View as long as we can keep that up for the remainder of the season. But I think that's everything we need to cover off before the game in today's episode. So we'll come back shortly from Crystal Park and hopefully go back on top of the table. And we have a highlight immediately from the kickoff in this game. We being at home are in the red and lock gal are in the blue. We are playing our traditional 4-4-2 here at Bambridge Town. Lock gal with five at the back and two defensive midfielders. McDowell makes his way into the box. Nice and early, plays a ball in there for his strike partner. And Stephen McCabot, who will grab his 15th goal of the season. And that is a brilliant start to this top of the table clash. Only 20 seconds in, and we grab the lead here at Crystal Park. McDowell just floats that one in, and McCabot kind of wrong foots the keeper, puts that one away, and we grab a very, very early 1-0 lead. And not too long off the back of that hot start, we do now have a highlight with Lock Gal in position around about the halfway line. The defensive midfielders here, it looks like, trying to get the ball to their few attackers. Nice ball there for McGuckin, who is in behind, albeit Higgins does deal with that. But a loose touch from him there, and that is an absolute gift there from our captain. And our left back should have dealt with it, should have burned that clear. But he tried to control it. It was a loose touch, and it did give Lock Gal the chance. To equalise, and just like that, this game is all square yet again. Only 10 minutes into it, you can see the attacker just in a poacher's position to tap that one home. It's a bad mistake from us, and it's one all just past the 10 minute mark, albeit now back down the other end with a free kick to OG Gallagher, and it actually forces a very good save out of Turka in goal there for Lock Go. We'll see if anything comes. From the subsequent corner and Dylan Snodden gets his head on the end of that. But unfortunately, the wrong side of the post and still one all. 15 minutes into this top of the table clash. And just past the half hour mark, we have our next highlight in this one. It is a goal kick in our favour, but we don't win that ball in the air. But good work there from OG Gallagher to get it back for us. We have the slight edge in terms of stats in this game. So hopefully we can make that count here before half time. It's a dead ringer to the first goal and it finds its way into the back of the net. It's pretty similar, the chance, and he heads it away in the bottom left corner yet again. And we do grab that lead we were looking for just over 12 minutes shy of half time. McDowell for McCabot this time under a bit more pressure from the defenders, but still gets his head on the end of it. Maybe we need to go to floated crosses for the rest of this game because it does look like we have an advantage in the air and with five minutes left in the first half there is another highlight but we do have a lead now of two goals to one hopefully we can hold on to that going in 
to the second half, but a good chance there for McGuck, and it's a very nice ball into the mixer. Thankfully, he puts that one wide, and it does look like we should be going into the sheds here with a 2-1 lead, and indeed that is the case at Crystal Park. So in the end, it's been a good first half for us, albeit you look at the XG, Lockgall have actually had the better chances, but overall we've had more shots, more shots on target, and that is why we do have a 2-1 lead. Cowan has picked up a yellow card, but I think we'll leave him out there for now. What we will do, though, I think is chuck in some floated crosses, as mentioned before. It does look like we have a slight edge in the air in this game so far, and we'll get the action back underway with that 2-1 lead. And just past the hour mark, I think it's time for us to make a few substitutions in this one. Two players have picked up yellow cards, and one of them is down to a 6.4 rating as well. So what we are going to do is take off Chris Cowan for Shea Conway and also Bobby Higgins, who did kind of make that error, which did lead to that lock goal goal on a 6.4 with that yellow card. Lewis Tosh can come on for him. Half hour left, and we still have that 2-1 lead. And shortly off the back of those substitutions, we do have our first highlight here of the second half. Hunter, thankfully, finds Lumi Kamway, and we might get a chance here to do something. Nice ball out there to Sam Robb. Puts this one into the mixer for Jay McDowell. He's got two assists in this one, and now he has a goal that's a very similar goal to the ones that Lock Gull have and have been trying to score in this one. We'll also tone down the mentality, I think, off the back of that goal and just see if that does help us cling on to this lead for the remainder of this game. But nice ball in there from Rob. It's a top finish from Jay McDowell, the man who is in on loan from Limfield. So he probably is going to be missing for that cup game that we might have coming up in the next episode. We'll also make a change there. Stolen down to a red heart. Gleek they can come on for him off the back of us, grabbing a free one lead. And we've just entered the last 20 minutes of this game. We have a throw in here inside the final third. Hopefully one more goal might seal this one. We do give the ball away there though. Come away with a bit of a loose first touch. But thankfully the clearance goes into the path of Bleakley. But then we hoof it forward. And McGee wins the race to that ball before McDermott. And there might be a chance here for Lockgill to do something. On the counter attack, Norton will play a ball over the top. McDermott heads that one away. But yet again, kind of gives position there. Back to Lockgale, but thankfully McNeil a lot too much on that ball. That's not very good English, Sean. But Hunter is there to tidy things up. Now, Fury will try and play out from the back there. We've told them to do shorter passing directness. That didn't happen that time, so that's a bit frustrating. And now McNeil puts the ball into the mixer, and Taggart is there to poke that one home. It's pretty much an exact replica of their first goal in the first half. But this time, we give the ball away through a loose pass and they had a lot of space there down that left hand side McNeil puts that one into the mixer Fairy can't quite get in the way of Taggart and with just under 20 minutes left in this one it is now 3-2 Bambridge Town and not too off the back of that goal which Lockgale did get back with a free kick here which OG Gallagher does put into the mixer we have gone back to our usual slightly more direct passing style off the back of that goal which we did concede before it did feel like it just didn't suit our defenders. And unfortunately, OG Gallagher with a poor pass initially, but thankfully does get the ball back for us here. And we might have a chance here towards the right-hand side. Nice ball over the top there. For McDowell, he goes looking for a double. Well, unfortunately, just puts that one wide. And we start to enter the last 10 minutes here of this game. It's a free kick there. And Foster has that one crashing off of the post. So thankfully, that free kick doesn't find its way into the back of the net. And now McCabot. Might have a good chance for us here on the counter-attack, but unfortunately his old legs are just a little bit too slow for that compared to the likes of McDowell. And now that we have entered the last 10 minutes, I think we are going to go to that time-wasting style yet again, shorten up the passing directness, and also go to a cautious mentality. And hopefully we can hold on to this lead and go back top of the table with eight minutes left. And we're just about to end injury time in this game. We have five minutes of added time, so hopefully we can get through this without any extra damage. And it does look like that is going to be the case. So it was a fiercely contested top of the table clash, that one. But thankfully, we just had the edge there through those two goals in the first half, through Stephen McCabot, and that one about 20 minutes into the second half, through Jay McDowell. They did get two goals back in quite similar fashion in each half lock gal. But thankfully, we just do enough there to hold on to that win. And that does mean, based on goal differential, we are going to go back 
on top of the table here in the championship and with that goal differential advantage if things do remain quite tight that could be something which is quite important so hopefully we can keep that in our favour and continue to do well in the games that are not against Lockgale but as you can see we are back on top of the table there off the back of that 3-2 win at Crystal Park. So a good win for us there in that top of the table clash just doing enough there to pick up a 3-2 win. If we go over and have a look at the league table yet again, that goal differential does mean that we are on top and it's 18 further points back to Dergview and Porter Down. It's an absolute scrum of teams who are fighting for third spot and looking to make a promotion playoff against which one of us are going to fall into second on the table. It would be a bit harsh if it wasn't Banbridge Town or Lockgull who made their way through to a promotion playoff against the team who finishes second bottom of the Premiership. But with the rules here in this championship, that could be something which does happen. So hopefully we can pick up the league and make sure we do not have to play any playoff games, but as you can see, in a very good spot with one third of the season left to play. But as I've mentioned a few times, it does look like the title race is going to be between us and Lockgull, provided both of us keep some decent form going throughout the rest of the season but that will do it for today's episode we pick up a win in that top of the table clash if you did enjoy this one then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well tomorrow we will come back and i think we are going to play what could actually be our last cup game of this season we take on premiership opposition yet again in Limfield, hopefully we can pull off an upset, but if we do get knocked out of that Irish Cup in the first round, it does mean we can put our focus entirely on the league season from there. But we'll come back for that Cup game especially, because those games in and around that are ones that you'd like to think we should be winning Dugview at home. Probably the toughest test, it's right off the back of this lock goal game, but then games away against the two teams near the bottom of the table before we take on Dundella off the back of that Linfield game so it does definitely stand out as the best game there from the month of January and maybe by then we might have done something as well in the transfer market so until tomorrow for the first round of the Pinky Blinders Irish Cup against Linfield thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs>